Hello, you fox. Welcome to John Solo's Beard Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. And yeah, we are, uh, we're working on stuff. Um, today is Sean Salvation from the, uh, our favorite brick, KC Wells. It's book five in the Main Men series. That's what I was trying to remember there. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the cover looks something like that. And, uh, he looks so clean cut. Also, I like the denim button down shirt. I haven't seen one of those since 1997. Um, so, uh, I warn you, we're going to have our special sound effect again. Pain us. Hi, how are you? Um, and we are on uh, chapter two, I believe. There's not many spoilers here. I think that you've heard virtually everything from the... Uh, she, Casey's real good about putting kind of a, a sneak peek to the book uh, at the end of the last book. So if you got Made Men 4 in audio, or if you even read it in Kindle, you've you've already heard kind of what we've done already. Uh, we're jumping into the new stuff now. We're on chapter two of this, and I'm just going to jump into this straight away. So um, if you've never seen a story time before, um, this is a real recording session. Uh, you will hear mistakes. You'll hear my lovely TNA Tracy jump in to tell me I fucked up. Tracy, are you there? Hi. Yay. So, um, and, you know, just uh, kick back, watch, relax, enjoy, have fun. And occasionally I might make fun of... Uh, I might make fun of Alyssa because she's in the crowd in Discord here watching. So, you know, I, I take full... I'm allowed to do that sort of thing, all right? Hey, CJ, how are you? I should probably save this, huh? That will help. Chapter 2. Sean closed the front door behind him. Nathan sat on the couch, a Kindle in his hand. He glanced up as Sean took off his... See, now I'm used to working in first-person present, and I keep on second-guessing myself in third person, which is my home. <sighs> closed the front door behind him. Nathan sat on the couch, a Kindle in his hand. He glanced up as Sean took off his coat. Good party? Your dad went to bed about an hour ago. He set the Kindle aside on the seat cushion. The party was great. How was he? Nathan smiled. He was telling me about the time he made those bookcases. He pointed to the sidewall covered in bookshelves, framing the large window. Apparently you helped. Sean chuckled. <laughs> And just how many times have you heard that story? A few. Gets cuter every time I hear it. He grinned. Did you really hit your thumb with a hammer? God, yes. Several times. But I was six years old. Sean glanced at the clock over the fireplace. It's late. I shouldn't have stayed so long. Yes, you should. Nathan's tone was firm. And I'm not in any hurry to get home. Your shift starts at 11 tomorrow morning, right? He nodded. Besides, I was hoping we could talk about something. Sean's stomach clenched. It was an involuntary reaction that occurred frequently and always linked to the feeling that he was about to be here. We could talk about something. Sean's stomach clenched. It was an involuntary reaction that occurred frequently and always linked to the feeling that he was about to hear bad news. Is it something that can be discussed over tea? Nathan blinked. At this hour? Sean crooked his finger. Follow me. He walked through the arch that led to the rear of the house. The white kitchen always reminded him of his mom. Sometimes he could still see her standing at the blue painted table, her hands submerged in a bowl of flour as she made pastry. Sean went over to the cabinet, opened it, and took out the tin that contained his special tea. He removed a box and set it on the countertop. Nathan picked it up. Celestial Seasoning Sleepy Time Vanilla Herbal Tea. I've seen this before. He smiled. The name and the teddy bear and the nightshirt and nightcap always make me think of my grandma. She used to drink this. He cleared his throat. I wanted to try the peach one, but I wasn't sure how old the... Grandma. 
choose to drink this. He cleared his throat. I wanted to try the peach one, but I wasn't sure how old the tea was. For all I know, it was your grandma's tea. One more time with feeling, grandma. She used to drink this. He cleared his throat. I wanted to try the peach one, but I wasn't sure how old the tea was. For all I know, it was your grandma's tea. Sean snorted. It was mom's. Well, not this box. She used to drink it last thing at night. I got to like it, too. Sean filled the electric kettle. Of course, when I was a kid, the kettle sat on a stove and whistled when it came to the boil. He peered at Nathan. Well, gonna join me? Do you have peach? He smiled. Sure, I've got peach. Honey. Sean opened the box and took out a tea bag. Have a seat. When Nathan did as instructed, Sean popped the tea bags into two cups. So, what did you want to talk about? Nathan leaned on his elbows, his fingers laced. Okay, stop me if I'm talking out of turn. I mean, you might have all this already worked out, but... Uh... Sean had never known Nathan to be so hesitant. Worked what out? Nathan cocked his head to one side. Has your dad put anything in place yet? I mean, for when... Ah, uh, Sean got where he was going. He set up a durable power of attorney for health care a few years ago. Having gone through all this with Mom, he wasn't going to be caught out. So you get to make medical decisions. Having gone through all this with <clears throat> Mom, he wasn't going to be caught out. So you get to make medical decisions for him if and when the time comes that he's no longer able to make his own or he's unwilling to. Sean nodded. But it's something you don't even want to think about, right? Nathan's eyes were kind. The kettle beeped, and Sean poured boiling water into the cups. He brought them over to the table. You have to let it steep for a while. His stomach was in knots. Nathan sniffed. Smells good. He leaned back in his chair. It's okay. I get it. None of us want to think about losing someone we love. But it's best to be prepared. At least your dad was switched on enough to get it done. Trust me, you don't want to leave it till it's too late. Sean gave him another speculative glance. Why do I get the feeling you're speaking from Stop. experience? Sean gave him a speculative glance. I, th I think that you messed up saying speculative. get it done. Trust me, you don't want to leave it till it's too late. Sean gave him a speculative glance. Why do I get the feeling you're speaking from experience? He shrugged. Because I am? I see it a lot. Most of the people I take care of are getting on in years. Sean grasped the paper tag at the end of the string and dunked the tea bag up and down with a gentle motion. How did you... A little early for teabagging, but all right. Tag at the end of the string and dunk the tea bag up and down with a gentle motion. How did you get into nursing? Whenever he looked at Nathan, one term always came to mind. Gentle giant. He had to be at least six feet tall, which made Sean's five feet seven feel tiny in comparison. My mama always said it's my calling. Deep brown eyes focused on Sean and he... My mama always says. Mama told me not to go. Does six feet tall seem like it's that big to you? It's certainly not that big. I've seen Casey and... she Casey's a tiny little thing, so maybe that's what it is. Life is like a box of chocolates. And she's tiny, but every time I hear somebody describe, he was huge, he was like six feet tall, I just start giggling. Listen, the crowd said six feet is tall to her, but... <laughs> I mean, kindergartners are tall to you. What are you going to do? Which made Sean's five feet seven feel tiny in comparison. <laughs> Depends on if you have shoes on or not. <laughs> so, something I never even considered. Flats? Flats? Would it flats do it? Which made Sean's five feet seven feel tiny in comparison. 
My mama always says it's my colon. Which made Sean's five feet seven feel tiny in comparison. My mama always says it's my colon. Deep brown eyes focused on Sean, and he stilled for a moment, aware of Nathan's scrutiny. But I guess it's because of my grandfather. He had dementia too, except most of his kids weren't as patient with him as you are with your dad. What do you mean? If your dad says something that's not right, you don't correct him, because you know that'll only confuse him, right? Well, my aunts and uncles just got irritated with him. My mom, not so much. And whenever I visited, I made sure to sit with him, be aware of his mood, give him a helping hand if he needed one. You're really good with Dad, Sean acknowledged. You're so calm with him. Maybe that's because I'm a calm person. And I like taking care of people, helping them, if I can. Did you work in a hospital? Nathan nodded. I specialized in geriatrics. The hospital was okay. I often got asked to do stuff like mop a spill on the floor. I specialized in geriatrics. The hospital was okay. I often got asked to do stuff like, you know, Mop a spill on the floor, as if people didn't know I was a nurse. All our uniforms were color-coded, right? So you can see at a glance who's a doctor, a nurse, but it happens. The thing was, I saw so many patients, and there was never enough time to focus on them. Who's a doctor, a nurse, but it happens. The thing was, I saw so many patients, and there was never enough time to focus on them. That's why I decided to take this route. I get to spend one-on-one -on -one time with people. He mimicked Sean and gently swirled the tea bag around the cup. Can I ask you something? Sure. You said you went through all of this with your mom. When was this? Sean reached for the bowl of sugar and spooned some into his tea. Why can't people ever just drink tea or coffee black? I don't... Ruining the fucking tea. Just why get the tea in the fridge? Just dump some sugar in some fucking hot water. It's easier. Sean reached for the bowl of sugar and spooned some into his tea. I'm not saying it's bad with sugar, and I'm just saying that, like, you're not actually tasting the tea there. Sean reached for the bowl of sugar and spooned some into his tea. I was 17 when she was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. Oh, shit. Nathan's face fell. I'm guessing it wasn't long before she passed. Not really, no. There hadn't been enough time to say all the things he'd wanted to. By the time he'd accepted that she was going, she'd gone. When did you notice the first signs in your dad? He was diagnosed not long after mom went. Maybe a year? But I think the signs were already visible before she passed. I just thought he was getting forgetful, you know? He couldn't recall names or faces. Then he started repeating himself a lot. He'd misplace stuff and it would turn up in the oddest places. Sean sipped his tea, but it was difficult to swallow. I thought he was coping badly with Mom's death. I didn't think it could be anything else. He was only 49, for Christ's sake. I know most people are older when they get diagnosed. But your doc picked up on it. That was a good thing. Nathan cleared his throat. Something I've been meaning to ask you. Can you put a picture of a toilet on his bathroom door? And maybe leave the light on in there at night? It might help. Sean knew what that was about. His dad's incontinence was worsening. But then again, so were a lot of things. His dad's moods, for one. Some days he seems so... apathetic. Nathan nodded. Mood swings are a bitch. He can be sad one minute, then frustrated, anxious. And I know it hurts when he doesn't know you. 
you have to make the most of those moments when it does. Sean's throat tightened. Yeah. Nathan sipped his tea and smiled. This is good. My mom would love this. She's always telling me to drink less caffeine. He chuckled. <laughs> She's a mom. That's what they do. And what you said about me being good with your dad? So are you. I know how difficult it can be watching him become less and less the person you remember. You just gotta love him. Then Nathan reached across the table and gave Sean's hand a squeeze. You're doing an awesome job. You work, you take care of him. Keeping all these plates spinning takes a lot of... Squeeze. You're doing an awesome job. Squeeze. You're doing an awesome job. You work, you take... Squeeze. You're doing an awesome job. You work, you take care of him, and keeping all those plates spinning takes a lot of energy. Just make sure you keep back a little for yourself. I couldn't do this without you. Sean's face grew hot. I mean it. That got his hand another squeeze. I like Peter. I mean, I like Dick, too, but I like... I forgot his name was Peter. Got his hand another squeeze. I like Peter. I wish I'd known him before all this. He strikes me as the kind of guy who doesn't give a shit about the color of a person's skin. Sean smiled. You just nailed it. My mom was the same. He let out a wry chuckle. <laughs> My mom would have loved you. When Nathan arched his eyebrows, heat surged over Sean's cheeks. If I tell you the names of some of her favorite movies, that might explain it. Training Day, Man on Fire, American Gangster, Philadelphia, Crimson Tide, the Bone Collector. Nathan laughed. <laughs> oh, I get it. She had a thing for Denzel, huh? Obviously a woman with good taste. He cocked his head. And what about you? Do you like Mr. Washington? I mean, he's okay. Sean thought Nathan was better looking. He loved how Nathan's skin was a color of raw honey, deep but golden. Those warm brown eyes didn't miss much. That summer he'd loved the reddish tone in Nathan's hair that only showed when the sun hit it a certain way. He loved how Nathan's cheekbones popped out every time he smiled, the laughter lines around his eyes. Denzel has nothing on you. Then he remembered who Nathan was, and thinking such thoughts felt highly inappropriate. He freed his hand to grasp his cup. Uh, something you said uh, about being asked to mop up spills. Did you have to cope with a lot of that? Nathan shrugged. Maine's a pretty pale state. In fact, I think it's still the whitest state in the nation. See, yeah, sometimes I uh, stick out a bit. And there are a lot of racist assholes. You'd think some of them had never seen a black dude. One time I did the math. Figures say 1.38% of Maine inhabitants are African American. Do you know how many that is? About eight. 15,000. I ain't so rare. Were you born in Maine? Nathan shook his head. Mom was a southern girl who married a railroad engineer. When my dad got a job with the Maine Northern Railway Company, we moved out here. Dad died before he could retire. And then Mom moved downstate to Augusta. Why she stayed in Maine, I'll never know. She must like it. And you moved to Portland. Nathan's smile reached his eyes. First time I saw the Atlantic, that was it. A done deal. I fell in love with the ocean hook, line, and sinker. 
He bit his lip. This has to be the most personal conversation we've ever had. Then it's long overdue. But we don't get that much time to talk. You arrive and I go to work. Or I come home and you leave. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Sean held back a smile. Something else we need to discuss? This seems to be the night for it. Nathan wrapped his hands around his cup. Okay, this is how I see it. You come home, I leave, and suddenly you swapped one job for another. Now, I know you don't see your dad like that, but I'm right, aren't I? You walk through that front door and switch from Sean Clark server to Sean Clark caregiver. So, but what I'm suggesting is a, a buffer zone. Sean frowned. Huh? Look, the healthcare company pays my salary, right? You agree on how many hours I work, so what if two days a week when you come home, I don't leave right away? What if I work an extra couple of hours? That way you get a little downtime. You can do your laundry, and wash the dishes, shop for groceries, whatever. And the reason I'm saying this, his expression grew grave. I know you only work 30 hours, but for the rest of the time, you're looking after Peter, and it's taken its toll. Now, there's no one else around here to look out for you, except me. Those warm brown eyes locked on his. You can't keep this up, Sean. Something's going to give. And I don't want it to be your health, mental or otherwise. He held up his hands. I'm sorry if you feel I'm being too personal or taking liberties. But I had to say something. It's okay, Sean said quickly. And I like your suggestion. I like your suggestion. Nathan sagged. Thank you. I was afraid you'd see it as intruding. No, you're very kind. I, I don't think it's imposing on... Thank you. I was afraid you'd see it as intruding. No, you're, you're very kind. I do think it's imposing on you, however. You'd be losing time. Nathan laughed. <laughs> And trust me, I don't have a lot to occupy my time. There's just me and my cat. Sean smiled. You have a cat? He grinned. No, I think he has me. I'm pretty sure Cat thinks he's in charge. Sean blinked. Cat? How original. When I got him from the Animal Refuge League in Westbrook, they told me Cat was a girl. But when I took her to the vet to get her shots, they asked if I wanted her neutered. I said, don't you mean spayed? And they said, no, neutered. Your cat is a boy. Well, wasn't it obvious? Nathan chuckled. He was a super hairy, tiny kitten. Maybe it's difficult to tell. He glanced at the wall clock. And speaking of cat, it's time I went home. He met Sean's gaze. You finish work at five tomorrow, don't you? Sean nodded. Well, don't hurry home. Take your time. Go sit on the eastern prom and gaze at the ocean. I can highly recommend it. it does wonders for the spirit. I may just do that. He let out a sigh. You're right. I'll talk to the company about changing your hours. Nathan stood. Thanks for the tea. I need to put that on my grocery list. I'll see you in the morning. Sleep well. Sean stood too. Thank you for listening and for thinking of me. All of it. You're welcome. Nathan flashed him a familiar smile. Sean walked him to the front door and waved as Nathan drove his car away from the curb. He closed it and locked up. He'd known the moment he'd met Nathan that he was one of the good guys, 
and their conversation only served to confirm his assessment. A very attractive good guy. That would be it for chapter two. That's a little bit... I, I love Casey. Casey, if you ever watch us, I love you. You know I do. By the way, I heard you look really good in leather. Um, but she's so good at character development. She takes her time, relaxes, chills out for a while, really lets you get to know people. And I love it. It's just a joy for an actor. Um, and obviously people love this series. So I love you, Fox. Thanks for hanging out. Enjoy yourselves. Peace out. Good luck. And uh, I hope we get some more snow.